Chapter 3, The Spirit of the Renaissance The Big Question How is the spirit of the Renaissance represented in Leonardo da Vinci's ideas and accomplishments? I don't know why I let you talk me into this, Master Leonardo. Carlo grumbled as he dragged an enormous contraption up the steep rocky hill. Leonardo da Vinci laughed quietly and said, Here, let me help. He steadied one huge wing of the flying machine as he walked alongside his servant. When they reached the summit, Leonardo gazed down at the streets and buildings of Florence. Ah, Carlo, in a few moments you will be sailing over our fair city, he said. Master, Carlo sighed. I wish it were you who could experience that pleasure. Leonardo fastened the straps around his servant's thin shoulders and waist. Done, he cried as he tightened the last leather tie. Master, Carlo protested. I look like a giant dragonfly. Hush, if this works, your name will be known throughout history, replied Leonardo. If it doesn't work, I'll be history, exclaimed Carlo. Leonardo led Carlo to the edge of a high cliff. Carlo peered over, then made the sign of the cross. If you please, master, said Carlo. Has it occurred to you that if God had intended man to fly, he would have given us wings? But Leonardo just smiled and gave Carlo a hearty push off the cliff. As Carlo plummeted downward, Leonardo shouted, Man can do anything he sets his mind to do, my faithless friend! It would be a nice ending to the story if Carlo suddenly swooped upward and soared like a bird over the rooftops of the city. But, alas, the poor servant fell and broke his leg. Or so goes the story that has been handed down to us over the years. The story, whether true or legendary, tells a lot about Leonardo's attitude toward life. Man is capable of doing anything he sets his mind to. Anything. That belief drove Leonardo da Vinci to explore uncharted territory in many fields. He was passionately interested in a number of subjects and highly skilled at most anything he tried. An Amazing Apprentice If we had to pick just one person to represent the spirit of the Renaissance, it might be Leonardo da Vinci. Painter, inventor, scientist, musician, and more, Leonardo embodies the belief that anything is possible. He was born in 1452 CE in Vinci, a town near Florence. As a young boy, he worked as an apprentice to Andrea del Verrocchio, a leading painter and sculptor of Florence. Leonardo's work as an apprentice kept him busy from dawn to dusk. He swept floors, fetched supplies, and made brushes. He also practiced drawing and painting each day. It didn't take long for people to notice Leonardo's artistic genius. Often, a master artist would paint the main features of a picture, but leave it for an apprentice to finish the landscape or other smaller figures in the background. In 1476 CE, Verrocchio was working on a painting called The Baptism of Christ. Verrocchio painted one angel and then asked Leonardo to paint another. Legend has it, that Leonardo's angel looked so much better than Verrocchio's that the old master never picked up a brush again. Leonardo in Milan When Leonardo was about 30 years old, he was invited to work for the Duke of Milan. While he lived in Milan, Leonardo continued to make works of art, but the Duke also employed him as a military engineer. Although Leonardo called war beastly madness, he designed some very dangerous weapons, including an armored cart that resembled a tank. When the Duke wanted to impress his fellow noblemen, he asked Leonardo to organize spectacular festivals. Leonardo created fancy stage sets and selected the music. He even designed costumes. While employed by the Duke of Milan, Leonardo constructed a huge monument made of terracotta, a clay-like material. The monument was in the shape of a horse, 
and was to feature the Duke of Milan's father as the writer. The gigantic clay model was supposed to be cast in bronze, but the Duke wound up using the bronze to make weapons for war. Worse yet, French soldiers invading Milan used the clay horse for target practice and completely destroyed it. The Painter at Work In Milan, Leonardo was kept busy working on all kinds of projects, including designing a whole new plan for the city. But did he ever find time to paint? Yes, indeed he did. While he lived in Milan, Leonardo created one of his greatest paintings, The Last Supper. The painting was commissioned by the Duke of Milan. It shows Jesus having supper with his closest friends. Some scholars believe, in particular, Leonardo focused on the betrayal of Jesus Christ and the part of the story when Jesus made the shocking announcement, One of you will betray me. Leonardo attempted to capture the very moment when the twelve apostles, Jesus' closest and most trusted followers, heard those words. How do you paint thirteen men at a table and still show all their facial expressions? Leonardo decided to place the apostles in groups of three, with Jesus seated alone in the middle. Notice how the artist isolates the figure of Judas, the betrayer of Jesus. Judas leans back, away from Jesus. Leonardo paid careful attention to the men's faces and their gestures, especially their expressive hands. He wandered the streets of Milan, searching for exactly the right faces and right poses to use as models for the people in this picture. The Last Supper is painted on the wall of a dining hall in a monastery. While Leonardo worked on the painting, the head of the monastery, called the Prior, became impatient for him to finish. He complained that Leonardo was lazy and that the artist was spending too much time wandering the streets looking for the right face for Judas. Leonardo admitted that it was taking him a long time to find the right face for Judas. But he said to the prior, If you're in a great hurry, then I could always use your face. It took two years, from 1495 to 1497 CE, to finish the Last Supper. The painting made Leonardo famous throughout Europe. Other artists and engravers made copies of it for hundreds of years. But the painting itself did not last very long. Leonardo experimented with a new fresco technique, using oil and varnish mixed in with his colors. The paint absorbed the moisture from the wall and crumbled over time. Recently, artists and scientists who specialize in restoring old paintings have used advanced techniques to try to make The Last Supper look more like Leonardo's original creation. Putting Things in Perspective The Last Supper is painted on a 14 by 30 foot wall. The wall, of course, is flat, but the painting seems to have depth. It almost seems as if you could walk through the open window into the landscape in the background. To create a sense of depth in a painting, Leonardo used perspective. You can see how Leonardo directs the viewer's eye toward Jesus. In The Last Supper, Leonardo followed the rules of perspective developed by Italian artist and architect Brunelleschi. If you were to extend the lines of the ceiling to the horizon, they would meet at a vanishing point in the center of the painting, somewhere behind the head of Jesus. This draws your attention to Jesus as the most important figure in the painting. Leonardo also put an open door and windows behind Jesus. Through them, you can see the landscape in the distance. In a book he wrote on painting techniques, Leonardo added some refinements to the rules of perspective. He said that when you paint objects at a distance, you should not make them too detailed, and you should make the colors a little weaker. Leonardo the Scientist After he left Milan, Leonardo lived in several places, including his beloved city of Florence. For a while, he worked as a mapmaker and military engineer, and he became friends with Niccolò Machiavelli, who worked in the government of Florence for many years. In 1506 CE, 
Leonardo returned to Milan. As time went on, he became more interested in science than in art. In fact, at one point, he wrote that he could not bear the sight of a paintbrush. When Leonardo looked at the sky and saw birds soaring gracefully through the air, he wondered, how can man fly too? Being Leonardo, he got to work and designed several devices. He tried to make a model based on the way bats flew. He boarded up the windows of the room he worked in so no one would know if his flying machine failed. It didn't work. Still, Leonardo's attempts were far from total failures. In the course of his studies, he developed some of the basic ideas for parachutes and helicopters. Leonardo explored almost every field of science, including optics, geology, botany, physics, and engineering. He made great advances in the study of anatomy. His notebooks are filled with highly detailed drawings of human bodies, not just the outside, but the inside too. Are you smiling at me? While Leonardo lived in Milan for the second time, he painted what may be the most famous painting of all time. It is a portrait called Mona Lisa. For many years, no one knew the identity of the woman in the picture. However, it is now believed to be Lisa Gerardini, wife of a Florentine cloth merchant named Francesco del Giocondo. For hundreds of years, people have been fascinated by the Mona Lisa. Look at the way she smiles. Leonardo added to the mystery of Mona Lisa by painting an unusual, misty-looking landscape in the background. If you look closely, you will notice that Leonardo used an interesting technique called sfumato. Sfumato is a way of painting that creates smooth changes between different areas of color and shading in a picture. The end result is a soft, hazy, smoky look. The perfect background for this mysterious woman. Last years. Leonardo lived in troubled times. When fighting broke out again in Milan, he moved to Rome and worked for Pope Leo X. But the Pope seemed to favor other artists of the day. So when King Francis I invited him to France, Leonardo left Italy never to return. He advised the French king on many architectural projects before he died in 1519 CE. Leonardo da Vinci was a man whose boundless curiosity, multiple talents, and visionary imagination summed up the spirit of the Renaissance. Mirror Writing Leonardo da Vinci constantly wrote in notebooks that he carried everywhere he went. In these notebooks, he recorded his ideas, questions, and sketches. At least 10,000 pages of words on every imaginable topic. But if you want to read them, you will need a mirror. Leonardo wrote from right to left, so all the letters are reversed. <laughs>